I want you to title your page Scale Factor. We're going to set this up like Cornell Notes, so we're going to start with an essential question. I'd like you on the very first line to start writing this question with me. How can I use scale factor to find the missing value in a proportion? You can even title that EQ for essential question. We are then going to divide up our paper like Cornell notes, drawing a line underneath the essential question, drawing a line down the left side for you to add questions on your own for studying. And in this section, we are going to put some notes. We're going to start off with the definition a proportion is two equal ratios the word we're defining here is proportion it's two equal ratios We're going to write an example of a proportion. I always think of a proportion like this. It has an equal sign in the middle. Remember equal signs tell us that things are balanced. One, whatever's on one side weighs the same or has the same value as whatever's on the other side. And what we're going to put here is 3 over 5 is equal to 12 over 20. I'd like you to look at those numbers. What change happened between 3 over 5 and 12 over 20? Uh -huh. uh, times it both by 4. Exactly. So we're going to write a because statement here. This is why these are equivalent and why they are proportion. Because 3 over 5 times 4 over 4 is equal to 12 over 20. Is that EX or EY? It's EX. Example. This right here is our scale factor. What did I multiply by? 4. So we're going to write a little statement here. The scale factor is 4 because we multiplied the values of the, we're going to call it old ratio or the original ratio. to get the new ratio.
And I'm going to go back up to my proportion and I'm going to label this. This is what we call the old or the original. And this one is the new. It's the changed one. We can use this idea of old and new parts of a ratio in proportions to find the scale factor. So if you don't know, like if you guys looked at this and you knew 5 times 4 is 20 and 3 times 4 is 12. These are numbers we're familiar with and math facts we know, but sometimes we don't know what it is. It's not a familiar number to us. So what we can do is find our scale factor by doing new divided by old. And if we come up here and we just use the base of each of these, what's the new? It's 20. What was the original or the old one? 5. 20 divided by 5 gives us 4. That number we knew as soon as you guys looked at these ratios. We've worked on cross multiplying to find missing numbers, but you can also use scale factor to find it. And that was actually our, our essential question, if you look back. Our essential question said, how can I use scale factor to find the missing value in a proportion? Well, let's try something that's not as obvious when we look at it. Let's do this example. What if you did 12 over 36 is equal to 48? over x. This 48 we know in our second ratio. And what does it go with in the old one? The 12. So I can take and divide 48 divided by 12. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get 4 again. That's funny. I didn't mean to. 48 divided by 12 gives us a scale factor of 4. That means I can take and multiply 36 times 4 to get this number. And it goes back to that idea of equivalent fractions. You guys remember how we talked about that early on? I'm just going to use pencil to write this in. If this is times 4 to get this, then this would also be times 4 to get this, right? It's another way to find that x. I have a calculator, so I'll just do it for us. 36 times 4 is 144. Not a number we've memorized, right? We've memorized 12 times 12 to get 144, but not 36 times 4. So then we would say here that 36 times our scale factor of 4 is equal to 144. So x equals 144. Mm -hmm. It's just another way to find a number that we could have found using cross multiplication, right? And let's just do that real quick with cross multiplication method. We do 12 over 36 is equal to 48 over x. What are my two things across from each other here? 36 times 48 is equal to these two across from each other, 12 and x. Sorry, I moved it up higher. Is that better? This is some pretty big numbers. 36 times 48 Anybody want to guess what it's going to be? It's huge. I got 1,728. 
1,728 is equal to 12x. Now we're going to divide both sides by 12. 12. And if I divide it by 12, we should get back to 144, which I did. It's hard to see on the calculator there. That'll help a little bit. Pretty much everything we do in math has another way of doing it. And you really want to just get flexible with these ways so that you can use the easiest way. When I look at the work I just did here, which of these two was, looks easiest today? The cross multiplication. The cross multiplication. And how many do you think it's this one? Um, Where you divide this by this and then multiply I by that. I think cross multiplication is easier for me. I think cross multiplication is too. But you guys see how this is not too challenging either? Yeah, they're both, they're both easy. They're both relatively easy, right? It's just which one are you comfortable doing, okay? I want you guys to take this idea and we're going to go back and look at the problem we finished with in math yesterday. You should have your math book. I'd like you to turn to page 25. Remember that brownie problem? Hmm? That's racist? Did you really just say that? All right. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about this problem because we use the idea of scale factor to find out how you would end up doing this. Uh, what page? 23. Five. I did say 25, but I meant 23. I apologize. Okay, let's take a look here. This idea of finding the scale factor by taking new over old. Do you see where I got these numbers from in the problem? The original recipe had 24 brownies being made, right? The recipe this person wanted to make was only going to have how many? 16. And 16 divided by 24 gives us 0 0.6 and it goes on and on and on. Who's cooked before? Me. Who's broken eggs and tried to use them in recipes before? Is it easy to use half an egg? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. This is kind of a problem when I look at this recipe because we looked at the eggs this morning and it took four cups or four eggs to make this. If it was four cups, I could easily divide that into fractions of cups, right? Four whole eggs, if I multiply my four eggs times my scale factor of 0.6 to shrink this recipe down, I'm going to get 2.4 eggs. If I use three eggs, it's going to be too much and my brownies are not going to taste like grandma's recipe because they're going to have way too much eggs in them, true? Yes. If I use two eggs, they might not hold together because the function of an egg in a recipe like brownies is to, it's, like the, it's like the glue. It holds it together. 2.4 eggs is not necessarily a normal thing to do. There are cook's ways around this, but not normal. If I got this in my kitchen and I was starting to work with this recipe, I would say, oh, forget it. I'm just making the whole thing. Do you guys see why? Right? It's complicated. Like, how do I do a 0.4 of an egg? That's not even half an egg. So I want you to go back and look at the problem. Does it make sense to do it the way the book outlined it then? I could take the cup of butter. I could take the two cups of walnuts. There's all these other things I could easily cut down except the eggs. But the question said, how should you change your recipe? Well, the answer is I would need to reduce it by a scale factor of 0.6. Or I'd need to cut out about one third of the ingredients, right? Okay, so with that today, I would like you now to turn to page 25. I've already done a little work in here, so this is kind of giving away, but I don't think it's too hard to, for you guys to do this. This problem today is looking at orange juice recipes. Who's made orange juice from that thick can that comes in the freezer and you have to add water to it before? Right? It's that kind of thing, except this must be a recipe for like 
a cafeteria because it's a lot of orange juice. This first recipe for one batch has three cups of orange juice concentrate and seven cups of water. That's a lot. The second recipe calls for two cups of orange juice and five cups of water. If we were going to double this second recipe, how many cups of juice would we put in? And then how much water? Ten. And we could use this idea of new to old and do 10 over five equals two. That's our scale factor. Well, the number of batches in this situation is your scale factor. It's telling you how much more of the juice you're going to make. And if I add, if I double it, I have to double both the water and the orange juice. If I double just the orange juice but not the water, you'd have really, really strong orange juice, right? Okay, so I'm gonna leave you guys to finish up these tables and question two. Turn the page, please. There's also questions three, four, and five. I want you trying to do three, one, two, three, four, and five. And then if there's time, you're going to ST math today. Questions? Okay, you can stay up here or you can go back to your original seats, whichever 